Siegfried, as you begin moving through the chamber, you see a white cat arc through and dart through a table, running past, hopping, skipping, and jumping. I will get down to my knees and say, it, it's okay, little one. We're here to save you. Make an animal handling check. It's so cute. The cat begins running between your legs, Zara. Looks like it's hopping over the dead body of the creature that Byron felled. And looking like it's about to run around the corner and go for the stairs. I start dragging this little body towards the stairs. Okay. I look at. Would any of you like to do anything else? Did anyone check the body? Or the I have or not. No. Look and see if there's any. Any information on what kind of book? I'll run through the bodies. Okay. Um, giving the bodies a once over, the bodies of the, of the goblin like creatures, and this uh, creature that Zara has referred to as a dull gaunt, um, you find a couple of uh, strange looking crossbows that appear to be designed to fire two bolts at the same time. And on the creature that Zar referred to as a dull gaunt, you find a small metal flat object that was tucked underneath its the waistband of its the ragged um, pants that it was wearing. I'm going to add that to the party loot, um, and I'm going to take those crossbows to Nick and ask me if he's ever seen anything like that. I haven't, but uh, one of these might actually be very useful for me. There you go. Is it is it like la is it like a regular crossbow size? Is it a large crossbow, or is it a small crossbow? Um, this appears to be a heavy two-handed crossbow, which these creatures with multiple arms appear to be um, operating with their multiple sets of limbs independently of their other arms. And you're fairly certain looking at it that it would have hurt real bad if one of you had been struck by it. And I will throw those two into the party's loot. Is this... Men could operate with two hands? It is something that you have to operate with two hands. Okay. So I could be, as a look, look of it. Use sorry, it. Derek, you are yeah. cutting in and out there. Oh, sorry. Um, so it's something that I could be able to use. Oh, yes. Any, anyone who is um, able to use martial ranged weapons would totally be able to use these. Oh, yes. Um, yes. I'm going to stick it in the back. One of, one of them in the, my bag of holes. Okay, it's in the party loot, so you're welcome to grab it. Okay. Is there any crossbow bolts on them, on the creature? Um, yes, there are some bolts. Between them, they okay. had between between them, they each had ten bolts, so you have a full amount of twenty bolts in a case. Okay. And I want to look at uh, what Samuel handed me the note that the other creature had. <laughs> was a metal disc. Oh, and, okay. The, the metal disc. And when yeah, you look, and I handed that over. And when you look at the metal disc, it appears to be a coin of some sort. But it's unlike any type of coin you've ever seen before. Hey, uh, let me take a look at that. Maybe I've seen it around. I've been to a few taverns far and wide. Oh, let Sigrid check it out. It's hot stuff. I hand it to Siegfried. Hey. I have not seen this before. Maybe Sara's seen it in the book somewhere. 
you all hear a sound of a, a thumping, the thump, the thump, the thump, the thump, as Byron kicks one of the goblin-like creatures' bodies down the stairs. Byron, what you doing over there? She had in the right place. Good job, Byron. Siegfried, looking at the object, it is filthy. It is it is made of some type of metal. You're not sure what kind, um, though. It it looks like metal, but it has a purplish hue to it. And looking at the body of the creature, where this disc was pressed against its body, you see a scorch mark, and the exact size of the coin on its skin. And from the scorch, it radiates out with these disgusting purple black veins. And the metal is, is it looks like a coin again, but it has sort of a, a purplish texture. Like it's, it looks like metal, but not. It is, it is strange. It's something that you've never seen before in all your days. Like, it almost looks at like it's metal that has been treated with something to be this color. It's sort of a, a rainbow-like effect as you hold it in the light and it hits it. It's purple one moment, then it's sort of a shade of blue, and then lavender, and then red. Byron, you can roll a animal handling. The white cat at first sort of arches its back and then as you reach down it relaxes and it leaps into your arms and it begins purring loudly a oh, little one it's okay hey Siegfried I got your cat well it seems to not like me but as long as it's okay it's just skittish don't take it hard I like it more for the cat. Attacking everything and ate, killed everybody. Well, no, because then we won't get paid. Never mind. Yeah, that is funny, though. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Cat killed them. <laughs> Suppose we better get them guards in here and let them take a look at the place. You can hear a sound emanating from downstairs of loud shouting now I guess it's time to go take a look Nick if those are guards maybe you should go down there and talk to them and tell them what happened alright on my way no, out that way okay. man I'm you... glad he works for the city he saves us so much trouble do you have the key <laughs> Nicholas uh no I don't I don't know who has the key Byron I'm gonna head down. Okay. As you head downstairs, um, you hear the familiar sounds of the city watch guard that you've spoken to before saying, Is everything all right in there? I heard the sounds of battle from coming from upstairs out here on the street. I'd say they probably hit me, Herbie hit that thing for three square blocks. Uh, yes, everything is fine. I'm gonna come to the door and can I open it up? Do you have the key? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, then you oh, cannot. Oh, you Byron, cannot... I I need the key. Just one second. <laughs> Push the other body down the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. Can I lockpick it? There's nothing to worry about, kitty. Let's sure, go right ahead and see who's at the door. I'm gonna drag Dolgon over there and throw that down. The Siegfried, you grab what? grab the creature and its blood begins staining the wood floors as you pull it across. You just see these trails of blood and gore from the two goblin-like creatures and the hobgoblin-like creature as you throw it down the stairs and it lands with a sickening thud. This pile of bodies at the very bottom of the stair. Yes, but I am Stemael, not Siegfried. <laughs> and Siegfried, what are you doing besides sulking in a corner? 
I'm just sulking in the corner, kind of looking at the books on the corner shelves. He's upset because the cat wouldn't blow. I'll start walking down the stairs and say, well, no one will be up here. No, in case there's anything of interest. I'll start Nick walking down. Nicholas, that's a sleight of hand check. That's not a uh, lock pick. I don't have a lock pick deck in oh. Ivy. Well, I guess you better build one. By the hand. No. You have lock picks on you? Yeah, but it, there's no skill check for it. It's yeah, Ivy. It's own. always by the hand. Yeah, you can make one. That's fine. Uh, you didn't unlock it, by the way. So, Byron, as you head downstairs beyond the disgusting pile of bodies, you see Nicholas. He's got his kit out with different lock picks, and he has one sticking out of the lock and he that he was wiggling as you walk down the stairs. Yeah, let me try this lock pick in there. And Byron produces the key. <laughs> this will probably work for you. All right, I take the key from him and open up the door. Okay. The moment that you open the door, the city watch guard is looking, and he just kind of goes, oh, my God, as Uza pushes him out of the way, and she rushes into the room and skids, slipping in the blood, and starts to pitch forward and fall on her face. Can I grab her? Yes, you may. Make a acrobatics check. Oh, I'd say yes. You reach out very deftly, spin, and grab, <laughs> and grab, I pull and her in close. <laughs> just sort I, of like I grab her by the arm and pull her in close. Here's your kitten, ma'am. <laughs> and she goes, "Oh my goodness, you amazing, amazing man! Thank you so much. Oh, Philippa, oh, I have missed you." And she reaches out and grabs the cat from you. And start and begins looking around the shops. Oh, this place! It's going to take forever to clean up. But you, you're all, you're all all right, of course. To the creature, are they gone? Uh, yes. Um, leave a uh, same way. I have some questions for you, or Nick. Somebody that talks. Of course, uh, yeah. of, of course. Oh, but uh, but uh, it, it's a, it's all in a day's work, ma'am. Uh, we're here to help, and I can bring someone. I can have someone come over here and clean up this mess. For well, I, I, I wouldn't presume to impose on you. You've done so much already, um, especially for the church. Is, is, is Sir Samuel okay? Oh, of course, he, he saved the day. We slay these creatures. We were just watching. You know, oh, it's all. Oh, by the gods, that is truly amazing. It's those. Uh, what are the silver flame guys? And they're the rocket. No, the church, the church of the Coatos. They, they are, they are wonderful indeed. I, Samael, where are you? I wish to thank you in person. I'm still upstairs. Byron slips into the crowd outside. Siegfried kind of heard them talk about clean. Um, he starts using presentation on like little of the soy spots and starts cleaning a bit of it. Okay. Oddly clean. Use your magical magical Roomba powers on on the uh, upstairs. <laughs> Siegfried, the magical Roomba. Is there a cleaning cantrip? There ought to be. I think that's presentation. Yeah. Soil or clean an object no bigger than one cubic meter for you. Wow. Nice. And it's a cantrip, so he can just keep doing it over and over and over. <laughs> you know, you can get paid for that. Oh, I'm not in there. <laughs> you know, we should start a cleaning business. Siegfried and cleaners. He'll sing you a song, play you a tune, and he'll clean your laundry for you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, with the cleansing stone. Double duty. You can, clean right, two, you, can clean, you can clean two you know, people at once. You know, we, we cleaned up the bad guy, and then we cleaned up after themselves. Hey, that's double pay. That is true. Guys. Listen, we're exterminators and a maid business. You know, just, it goes hand in hand. I just imagine, like, you guys come downstairs and like, yeah, you know, we we could leave right now, but we could also clean the rest of this for you for double the price. 
yeah, if you check upstairs, um, we gave you a free sample if you want us to, you know, take up the rep. I actually uh, think that's a swell idea. I mean, if we don't do it, she's going to have to do it by herself, and she's just a little old lady with a cat. On top of that, she might have to pay somebody to do it, and I mean, we're already here. It would be expedient. Please remove her. Hi, I'm Siegfried. Deep stains, blood and guts everywhere. No problem for Siegfried's precipitation, quick clean touch. <laughs> we clean up monsters and spills. So Uza is now is continuing to like pet her cat with tears running down her face. She looks around, looks to you, Nicholas, and she says, "What? What? What happened? This place was." was wrecked but these bodies where did they come from they look like watch the watch the men uh, outside yes, said they they sent people in and and they never came out unfortunately ma'am uh two city watch have fallen today uh due to there's three monsters upstairs but they are slain by the church and the inquisitors um i do want to ask you a few questions ma'am if i may well of, of course I, I will help you as 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 much as I can. Uh, he was mentioning a book of seals. Do you, do you recall anything? Now that everything's calmed down and you can slowly breathe again because we took care of the problem, I was wondering if you can recall anything. Yes, um, the, you... the, that is what the creature kept insisting that it was looking for, something about seals, dimensional seals. But I have no such books here of, of any sort, but it didn't believe me. It kept insisting, it insisted that it could smell it. Hmm. Oh, you don't believe that you have any sort of book? Anything close no. to that? No, no, nothing of the sort. It, most of my books are, are from private collectors who have either passed away from the war, soldiers who've given away, the, or widows who've given away their collections. Uh, many of my books are, are mostly from Colver, of the many different nations. Um, and and a few few from Salona, but many of those um, folk have come in to try and reclaim as of late. Hmm. Do you mind if we take a look around and see if we can find the book? And if we do find the book, do you mind if we take it? I, of Part course, of uh, 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 by all means, uh, of course, any, any anything that I I, c I can help you with, I will I will do my best. Oh, and uh, your cat is perfectly healthy. We, we also found them. And she looks at you, and then she holds the cat up as if to show you, yes, I know. Oh, I'm so glad that you... <laughs> 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 I'm going to turn it over. Hey, hey, Siegfried? Siegfried, where are you at, my friend? I called on. I'm cleaning, honey. I'll be down in a moment. And he just... Finishes the area I just imagine just Sieg down. <laughs> Siegfried's pulled his hair up into a bun. He's got his apron on. <laughs> uh, Siegfried, I was curious. I know that you went to the magics of types. Um, do you know if you can, you know, detect or find anything magical in here? You, ha you know, I wasn't sure of your magical nature. I know the magic of words and music my friend i do not know how to find magic but if i do say most of the time when it comes to magic books that i know of not everything with useful information will always give off magic but it wouldn't hurt if anyone was able to detect magic but books are awesome and very amazing and it may be worth it just to look at hand because we don't know what information we may additionally find if we did it by hand. I agree. I mean, I we agree. could probably narrow it down to an area, even at that, just by what it's supposed to be about. How about we all do a search and divide and conquer? We might be able to get it done a bit. <laughs> well, rather than having every, <laughs> rather than having every single member of the party roll an investigation or perception check, why don't we pick one or two of you to help each other? And we'll just do one roll, and I'll s we'll see how well you guys do with advantage. Who's good at investigating? Not so. Uh, the, the Inquisitor. 
as you're all de determining the best course of action, Nicholas, you overhear Uza saying, Oh, Philippa, you've, you've lost your trinket that was hanging from your collar. Where is it? Oh, it looks like it is broken off. Um, excuse and me. And she turns uh, and she looks and she says, yes? Uh, you talked about a trinket on his collar. Yes. Um, is, is what it, it, Philippa was always had it. Uh, I actually, uh, Philippa's not mine. Uh, Philippa was gifted to me. Uh, his previous owner passed away quite some time ago. It's, it's very curious. Uh, I've had Philippa for over 30 years. And she's very old. And the only thing that was given given to me with her besides her bed was her collar that had this little trinket that hung from the collar that strange didn't have any writing of any kind of it but it, she's had it for so long I would hate to lose it it must have fallen off somewhere upstairs may I ask what color was it oh it, it's no no larger than a coin uh, it ha it looks like it's made of metal but it, it has a bit of a strange um, sheen to it, almost, almost I would say like a a pearlescent sheen. I pull out the item that I had last, the coin thing. Would it be this? Yes. Oh, of course. And she holds out her hand to take it from you. Please. Oh, thank you so much for finding it. Um, I'm I very well apologize. That creature took it off of your cat's. Uh, that 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 trinket must be something very important. I need it for the investigation. I'm gonna have to take it up to the Inquisitor. Oh, um, well, um, I, I apologize, ma'am. That that's that's quite all right. Um, I, I, I'm gonna pull out a bag, like a Philippa. Bag and Philippa it. is my ward, of course. I I would be I, most grateful if you could return it when you're done with it. Nicholas, I would do apologize my best, ma'am. I would do my best, ma'am. Thank you. Please, please don't lose it. Uh, no problem, ma'am. I will do my best. <laughs> Nicholas, I still don't hear you apologizing to the cat. It is the cat's chaw. Nicholas, as you look at Philippa, Philippa is currently staring at you. Unmoving. A uh, uh, Byron. And Byron. It is now growling. Just say sorry to the cat. <laughs> I'm sorry, little one, and I'll pat it on his head as I pet it. And make, a dexter make a dexterity <laughs> save. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as you reach out to pet it, it just kind of goes and tries to bite you and just happens to miss. Oh. Mm. Pull it away. Oh. I... Uh, it then starts pawing at your hand if you're holding the uh, you said you were putting the disc in a bag it starts yeah. it starts pawing at your hand as you as you pull away with the with the item as if it's trying to grab at it Byron as I, as I put the item in, in a little like baggy and I'm gonna put it in my bag of holding I'll walk okay. inside the building okay uh, Byron um you have a way with animals I've never seen before. Is there any way that you could maybe, you know, communicate with this animal and ask it what it knows? It held this, it held this trinket, and then we found out the trinket came from the cat. It's collar. So I was just curious, you know, your ability if you were able to communicate it with it. I really hope our meows, meows back, and then he uh, jumps on. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll lean in towards the cat. I'll try to whisper into it a little bit. Make an animal handling check. Okay. Um, the creature sort of looks at you, shifting its gaze from Nicholas to you, Byron, and then back to him. And then back to you, and it, it just kind of makes a little blip with its tongue. Um, Nick, uh, he's asking for a receipt. Are you serious? Yeah, he wants a receipt for the trinket you're taking from me, so that he can pick it up later. 
Uh, I pull out my notebook from my pocket and I write, trinket, and I rip it from the notebook and I hand it to the lady. Here's your receipt. The cat reaches out. <laughs> the cat reaches out its paw and very strangely takes the piece of paper from you. Even though it doesn't have an opposable thumb, it uses two of its digits to grab the piece of paper and looks at it and then looks at you again. And then just kind of cocks its head to the side and then hands it to Uza. Go bring it back. I'm feeling this cat is a little more intelligent. Yes, I'm feeling here. like Byron should ask if it knows about the Book of Seals. Uza then grabbing Philippa and, and hugging it and looking at the piece of paper a bit confused and, and with a apologetic smile says, I, I, I must go home. I, I must take care of Philippa. She, she hasn't eaten all day. And if there are no other questions for her, she begins heading towards I, the exit. I have one. Uh, ma'am, can you give me a bit yeah, of information yes. about Philippa's yeah. old owner? Oh, this long, long time ago um, was a member of House um, Kenneth, I think. I, I don't remember the name. I, I'm sorry at the moment. I'm a bit frazzled. Um, but it was one of the patrons of House Kenneth, if I'm not mistaken, that passed away during the war. Was one, uh, did they practice magic of any sort? So... Oh, oh, yes. The... Uh, the patron of House Kanth was a very powerful artificer and wizard. Interesting. Um, thank you for your time. Um, what uh, was her name? Just for reference. My name? My name is Uza. And your friend's name? Oh, this is Philippa. Philippa. No, no, the dead friends. How could I ever forget Philippa? Such a beautiful beast. A dead friend. I I misunderstood. I I told you, sir. It was it was one of the patrons of House Kenneth. Unfortunately, I I can't remember his name at the moment. Thank you for your time. Um, please, please get some rest. Thank you, thank you all so very much. Please, and please let the silver flame and the, and the Inquisitor's office know that my my gratitude is is forever in the sakes and i i will i will gladly pay you today for all you've done i i will send i will send money as soon as soon as possible i don't have anything on me at the moment i cannot offer you more than my thanks but i will i will send donations to the church immediately that if is that, quite all right ma'am if that is all right with you i i, I will take my leave you are free to go, ma'am. Thank you so much for all your time. Thank you. Thank you again. And I apologize for Philippa. She can be a bit rude sometimes. No problem. So, guys, are we done here? Philip, uh, oh. <laughs> as Uzo is walking away with Philippa, it shifts and adjusts and is looking over her shoulder from behind her straight at you, Nicholas. And as you watch, it takes one of its paws with two of its digits points its fingers at you and then at its eyes and then back at you. <laughs> I'm going to put my hand up and show it the birdie. <laughs> Nicholas, a word. The, as, just as Uzu is about to slip into the crowd out of your peripheral, you see the cat take its paw, its whole paw, and put, ball it into a fist and then make a dragging motion away from its chin towards you. <laughs> hey guys, I just made an enemy of a cat. <laughs> Nick, Nicholas, can can we can we talk real quick? Uh, yeah, Siegfried, uh, I may help yeah. you. It, it, it's a bit weird that a friend that gave her such a dear cat, and she can't remember the name, which is strange. Time does things, but still is strange. Two, the cat's lift a thirty. Could we possibly not think that maybe her wizard friend somehow changed their or whatever of their dying body into the cat or something of that sort I don't know something just suspicious is here with that cat I agree I've never seen a cat make motions toward me it's Let's just a change it, guys it knew that knew something it knew that trinket 
was something it like it meant something to that cat. It was definitely more intelligent than I've ever seen. I'm sorry, but it was a lot more intelligent than Francis. As much as I love Francis, I've never really seen a creature, you know, want something or look at me so dead-eyed, knowing that I took something from it. Yeah, we should also talk to Foda because he's thinking about dimensional things, and if there's a seal about multiple dimensions, a book of it, then maybe he knows about it too. I agree. I say we search the place first and see if we can find anything here, and then we move on. In a strange yeah. thing, how did he know that you were supposed to give him a receipt for what you took? Hmm. That's true, Byron. Well, oh, yeah, that's a change one. Smart. That's why maybe I'm thinking... The I'm just imagining have... Samael standing in the corner as you guys are pacing back and forth talking <laughs> about this cat, and he's got his arms folded, and he's just going, you know that cat's a changeling, right? <laughs> and yeah, he just keeps exactly saying what I'm doing right now. And <laughs> Zara wanders down from upstairs and she's now standing next to Samael just looking at you guys pacing back and forth discussing this intelligent cat. Just because something is intelligent and weird doesn't mean it's a change thing. It literally could be a thousand other things in the world. You no you hey you're guys, right. Are, it could are, be. are we done here? Uh, because we could have a conversation at our home rather than in public. Yes, as you, but we I also want to investigate the books here, Byron, the, to see if we can find the book before. As you, oh, as you okay. continue to have your conversation, the watch are now in, and they are pulling out the bodies, first of their dead men, and then a few of them are approaching and now cordoning off the pile of dead creatures, goblin-like creatures, at the base of the stairs, and they look at look at each of one of you as you're continuing to have this conversation out in the open in front of them. Mm. I agree with Byron. Let's go. Let's do a quick search. Mm, quickly, and then let's get. Um, don't worry, Zara. I said, I'm an inquisitor. I'm doing an investigation. Uh, please uh, clean up this mess so this lady can, uh, you know, go back in peace. Um, I apologize. We actually slain these creatures and let us do our work. Thank you. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, yes. Fuck you. And the it's guy just bounds over laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Nicholas, my friend. You don't deserve the kind of disrespect. The and cat, and now this. The the watchman, balding, no facial hair, long mutton chops, is looking at you, and he says, "I've had about enough of your kind adventurer types, coming in, coming into our city." signing up with the inquisitor's office and then walking around flashing your badge you come in here you make a mess sure you killed the creatures but now you're gonna leave us to clean all this up by ourselves and then the other man that's standing next to him reaches out very gingerly grab him by the shoulder it's it's not it's not worth it come on man i'm gonna come out the door I, also I and say, my why don't you go ahead and follow when he tugs your leash yeah but you gotta think of one thing here man is uh, the whole situation is uh, you couldn't handle it. We handled it, or you'd be laying on the floor dead with your buddies. In. So suck it up, pull the bodies out, do what you're told to do, and you know earn your paycheck in it in a week. Yeah, go on back home, get your first pair of panties on. We'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, the, man's, the man's the man's one of his to make his voice loud. Enough typing, children. All right, and then he turns it back. Samuel, Byron, breathe. You, sir, thank you for your help. I tried to clean up as much as I could. We just have a lot of cases on our hands right now. We have both a member of the Silver Frame Church and an Inquisitor. Both have open cases that we're trying to work on and get settled for the city. Not just this. This for the church. Thank you for your help. We saved you the fighting so none of you nor your men got hurt. And we Yeah, none of us got hurt, all right. Yeah, this lady and whatever crazy shit she's involved in. And now two of our friends are dead. What are you gonna do about that? If their families can of those families can't afford to resurrect them. This is on this is on her. No, yeah, we have to it's clean on up. your two men. They made a conscious decision to run in here with no backup when backup was on the way. Don't sit there and blame that on everybody else just because they were impatient. Impatient? They were ordered. You took forever. No, we got here as fast as we possibly could. And you could have waited for backup. You could have had more men. Don't sit there and blame us because you were doing your job and something bad happened. Bad things happen to people all the time. 
bad things happen to us too. It's just part of the uh, job. Yeah, whatever. And you know, oh, we'll find you a trash can to empty. You know, and if you want to, you can always work out more and practice more and maybe be, you know, competent at your job. Byron the, man goes just, the man just kind of his eyes go wide at your comment, Byron, and he he stands up, just sort of flushed, and he's like, huh, 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 "I never." And he begins walking, storming out of the lo the ground floor, out the door. And his friend just kind of sheepishly looks in the direction his friend went, and then back at all of you, and he says, I "I'm I'm so sorry." He, you have to understand. Um, Kevin was his best friend. Hmm. I do want to say I do thank you for all your hard work. You guys do a lot, and I apologize we couldn't come here sooner. It's it's quite all right. I, the city is huge. There's uh, 200,000 people streaming in and living here, and thousands of more streaming in and out all the time. I, I completely understand that he's he's just blowing off steam. I apologize for him blowing up on all of you. You're just you're helping us out, and what you did was 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 amazing. I thank you so much. I I, I have no other words. I, I I can't can't apologize more for his for his behavior. No worries, it is fine. I understand. I completely understand his his frustration. We'll be quick out of here, but we do need to look around real quick. Don't worry, we'll be on our way after that. Zara. Go ahead. Zara opens her pack up and pulls out her last two little cakes. Yeah, uh, perhaps you can give this to your friend. I know it's not much, but uh, the the man looks, know, looks down at his hands, which are completely covered in gore and blood from the bodies that he's been lugging, and he looks back at you and he says, "Uh, uh, that's okay. Um, I'm not hungry." And then he just kind of goes, <laughs> like he's about to throw up. Oh, 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 God. I have to get out of here. I need some air. And he immediately drops the leg of the creature, the Dolgaunt, with a sickening thud, wet smack, and he stumbles out the door. Mm, weak stomach, I guess. I guess. Well, that didn't help. But I tried. All right, guys. Uh, really, we got no. <laughs> let's let's investigate quickly and then get back. Yes, while you investigate, I'll continue using presentation, trying to clean up as much stuff as I can. Zara walks up to Nicholas. Nicholas, you are the best investigator I know. How about you take? Tell us what we're looking. Uh, well, we're looking for books, any type of books with seals any mention of seals the creatures or seals the symbols what does uh, a seal look like well and i pull out my little notepad and my pencil and i draw like a little like symbol uh something like this oh my like god a, it's like a, king, like a king seal you know what i mean something like a seal there you know yeah Sig Siegfried does a cartwheel <laughs> Just cleaning stuff up with presentation, doing cartwheels and hopscotches. All right, well. Do you think see. that this uh, trinket from the cat is a seal, or belongs on the end of? A... So, blood they... and stamp it. See what happens. About fifteen minutes of searching. Which floor do you search first? I want to search the second floor because that's where they were. Okay. Plus, it's where all the blood pools are. We need one. Let's to start blood. where the creature was hanging by the bookshelf. I want to start there. Yeah, because you mentioned that the, the creature said he could smell it that was in here, so he would have been near. Yeah, but he might have been just saying that. You know, I say all kinds of crazy stuff. It doesn't make it true. So, Nicholas, um, passing through, looking at the various. Um, Stepping over the bits of, of uh, books that have been scattered. In that far corner, you find one of the bookshelves just looking at the various uh, void spaces where books once sat on the shelves. 
and feeling your hand along, you find a catch of some sort on the underside of, um, of a shelf at chest height. And you feel something, a raised area in your, against your fingers, and you're not quite sure what it is, but it feels sort of like some sort of button. I'm going to push the button, but first maybe look and see if there's any trap. Go right <laughs> ahead. I'm going to put my shield up first. <laughs> Um, you giving the shelf a look up and down this eight foot tall bookshelf and looking at the shelf next to it the shelf next to it immediately next to it has some give when you push on it but the bookshelf where you found that strange catch does not it is solid to the floor Hmm. I'm going to push the button. Okay. Make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> you die. Just kidding. <laughs> that, that was a joke. A poorly timed joke. <laughs> the you, you press in... Um, you hear a sound of a click and then the entire bookshelf moves over and pushes against the shelf next to it and stops like after a couple of inches it goes and hits against that shelf and it sort of bounces back a little bit and then comes to rest again against the shelf and looking around the back of the shelf you can see a depression in the wall behind it What does it say? What no, it is, seems is... to be some sort of alcove. But it's dark. You can't see very well. And from what you can see, you see a grayish mass, like a bundle of something within. Everyone, I found something, a hidden a hidden door. Don't Upstairs. Man. Don't yo, oh my god. What was that about a hidden door? <laughs> You want everyone Not... outside to know too? Come on, people. It's a <laughs> hidden door to where Samael stored all of his fucks, I believe. <laughs> it's very imaginary. Samael, as you're standing in the corner um, doing your best impression of a bookshelf, um, several watchmen <laughs> begin um, starting to walk towards the stairs to go upstairs. Uh, hold on, we're doing our investigation up there. Stay down here for the moment. Are you sure? Uh, it's no problem at all. We can help. No, no, no. Just hang out here. We'll give you a win it's all clear. If you're uh, too busy and you need to go do something else, you can go right ahead. We'll clean up if need be. But uh, for now, just hang tight. Make a persuasion check. Can I trade that in for an intimidation check? Sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Dang it. My bad. You're right, Mark. Dude. <laughs> So, at first, oh, your oh. your timber was even keeled, but as you got to the end of your sentence, you became more darker, a bit more menacing, and your voice deepened. And the man just sort of he looked past you, and then he looked back back to you, and saw the serious look on your face, and heard the tone of your voice, and he said, "Oh, oh, um, well, that's all right. We'll 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 take our leave. You." you do do what you, you feel is best. And he backs up Very several welcome. feet. Good man. See you around. Up, up, right, up, 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 top of the morning. Tea. Oh, it's not morning. It's afternoon. Goodbye. Later. Hey, Sam, well, if you could... Uh, Sam, I, if you can come over here. That's right. Say my name. I just imagine Samuel stalking up the stairs, hearing Nicholas calling him. He's like, that's right, you say my name. That's exactly what happened. What's going on? 
And then Samael flew across the room over the bookshelves and landed <laughs> next to Nicholas. I told you I'm possessed by demons. Sometimes that happens. Ah, uh, I found I found a, a hidden passage. Really? Yeah. You want to go check it out together? Yeah. Of course I do. Everybody come with us? Ooh. Yeah. It's a couple of inches. All right. Well, you, I'll lead the way. Let's go. Someone said something about a hidden uh, passage. You know, it was uh, pretty hard not to make it is. So why don't we just talk about being more stealthy? You know, stealth. Let's say free real estate. Siegfried, there's a hidden passage. Come on. Hey, Baron, come on. Uh, I couldn't hear you. Could you yell, yell a little louder on there? What was Baron, that about? There's what a was... hidden passage. Why don't you come with us? What was that about hidden passage? Go home. It's just a hidden passage to all the fucks we don't have to give. We're trying to farm <laughs> some. Oh, uh, all right. We'll right. We'll continue cleaning up all your shit for you. It should be clean up here. I went around precedentifying a lot of stuff. Sadly, I can't do anything about limbs, but I think we kicked all the limbs downstairs. So, all the blood should be clean up here. Thanks. If he, if he annoyed you with that, ask him to spell that word when he gets downstairs. I'll precedentation your attitude, Samuel. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so what are you guys doing? We are proceeding forward, sir. Uh, well, there's at the moment there's nothing to proceed forward through. There's a two it's bookshelves. A alcove with a bundle there that Nicholas thought was a hallway, but it's just a little alcove. Wait, I thought Nick said he found a secret passage. Yes, he did. I go yeah. back and and push the button and hold it. Okay. Uh, the button has give, but there's no clicking sensation. And as you grab the shelf, the bookcase seems to be on some sort of track and is bouncing against the other shelf that's immediately next to it. Can I? I'll I'll, uh, I'll look at M I L and go. I think we need to move the shelf. Here, help me. You want me to smite it? No, just just pick it up and you know move it. I'm kind of weak. Okay, okay sure. I will handle it. You know, next time, Nick, just take the books off. It becomes a lot lighter then. Oh, that is true. That is true. Samuel, you reach out and grab the other shelf and very deftly pull it away. And as you do, the second shelf where the button was found slides over into that space where that shelf, that bookshelf was and reveals a four foot by four foot cubic alcove set into the wall and there are strange engravings and carvings in the interior of the alcove all over on the sides on the top on the back and there is a bundle laying within the alcove some sort of silvery gray cloth covering it Nick, this looks totally safe. Reach in there and grab it. I'll reach in and uh, grab it. You die. Sikri sneaks up and just pushes a finger on both sides of uh, Nicholas and gives a... <laughs> he reaches. You reach out and grab the bundle, pulling out and looking at it. And there appears to be some sort of tome within this silvery, almost silk-like tarpaulin that is covering it. I want to look at the tome. Okay. The tome itself is very thick. About two and a half inches thick. And there is some sort of clasp holding it closed with some sort of lock. And the depression, and the, the but the lock is unlike anything you've ever seen before. It appears to be some sort of depression. 
like a, cir a circular depression. I'm gonna reach in the bag of holding. Pull okay. out the bag that I put the, the trinket in. Pull out the trinket and look at the whole circular hole compared to the trinket that I found. Is it the same size? It appears to be the same size. In fact, the metal of the clasp on the book matches the color of the metal of the disc. Hey guys, I think I found the key and I push the disc into the socket. You push it into the socket? Yeah. Okay. There is a brilliant flash of light as Byron runs out of the room screaming. Oh, I just fade to the back. Uh, is it as bright as when I hit that creature there, earlier? You, you thought you had time, Byron. All five of you feel a pulling sensation in your stomach. And your vision, a bright light, brighter than the sun. And you are all blink out of existence all at once. TPK! And that's where we're going to end the session. Oh, dang. dang. Well, well, I found the key, guys. <laughs>